Men of Shore Athletics, welcome to your virtual SNC session. In this uh, video, we're going to basically outline your warm up and then session one, and then we'll move on to session two. Okay, so just follow along with the warm up, guys. Okay, we're going to go over the sort of technical points of each movement, then you can pause it, complete two rounds of it, and then we'll move on to the sessions themselves. Okay, here we go. All right, the first movement of our warm-up is the body weight squat. Now the first and the easiest way of doing this is just doing a squat with your arms out in front like Jake is demoing here. Okay, notice how he's sitting right back into his heels, keeping his weight through his heels. He's got a nice smooth tempo, taking three seconds to come down and then nice and smooth on the way up. With each rep, Keeping good body position, he's trying to get a little deeper. So he completes 10 reps there. I think that's nine. One more, please. Okay, good. Now, a couple of deep breaths, guys. Moving on to the second uh, movement or exercise, which is known as the reverse warrior lunge. Okay, so you get your feet together. Okay, you'll step back with one leg. And as you drop your back knee, and your hips down towards the ground, you'll raise your palms to the ceiling, keeping nice straight elbows. Now this is an excellent movement for opening up the whole front of your body, okay? And as runners and jumpers and even throwers, we all know how important it is to be able to get great hip extension in our, in our stride, for example, okay? So this is a great one for opening up, as I said, that whole front of the body or that particularly that anterior pelvic region, okay? So you've complete five each leg. Got one more each, I think, yep. Really reach up high, drop your back knee, you might just kiss it on the ground there. Okay, very well done, guys, okay? Moving on to the third movement, which is known as the Spider-Man with the thoracic rotation, okay? So you get into a push-up position, okay? You're gonna step out with your Left foot next to your left hand, okay? Notice how he keeps straight through his back knee, okay? And then he'll drop his left elbow to his heel and then keeping his eyes on his fingertips, he reaches for the sky or the ceiling. Then he alternates. So right foot comes out next to the right hand. He drops the elbow next to the heel, okay? And then keeping his eyes on the fingertips, he'll raise it high to the ceiling rotating from the pelvis all the way through the spine and then into that limb. With this movement, guys, you're doing five each leg or five each side, okay? So good work, Jake. Each rep, you're trying to get that little bit more range of movement. Imagine your spine's a wet towel and you're trying to squeeze it dry. Ensuring that back knee remains straight and weighing heavy through your hips. Great exercise, also known as the greatest stretch alive, opening up a lot of key areas of the body. Okay, finally guys, this one's uh, very much focused on the hamstrings. Okay, it's called a ground sweep. Okay, so you pitch your heel into the ground, toe pointing towards the sky or the ceiling, slow sweeps from behind the heel past your toes. Now, you don't necessarily have to be able to touch the ground here, it's just finding a point that's you know a very uh, difficult sort of stretch or, or strong stretch for you and sort of sweeping through in that motion. Okay, so if you're very mobile, you'll obviously have your heel out in further in front of your hips. And if you're not quite as mobile, it's gonna be sort of more underneath your hips there. So find out where, where you stack up. Okay, so that's five each leg. Okay, so guys, that's four movements there that we've uh, completed in that little circuit. You'll go through that one more time in your own time. So you've completed it twice. Okay, guys, get stuck into that warm up and we'll be back with you very shortly to start session one. Okay, guys, welcome to session number two. Okay, so we're gonna start off with complex number one, obviously. Okay, so the A exercise is a step up, okay? so. As we did with session one, we're gonna run through the different levels of each movement, okay? So, A exercise, step up, 
B exercise is the push up. Okay, so coming over. Okay, Jake's going to demonstrate. We'll swap over, mate. Okay. So level one of the step up is just body weight. Okay, you're going to just put have your say left leg there, and you're just stepping up on a I guess a step or a um, bench or something of the like. Okay, try to find one that's sort of just under kneecap height. Okay, great work. Okay, so moving on to level two, okay? To advance it, obviously, you're gonna externally load this movement. So, as we sort of described in session number one, you might have some gym equipment, it might be a household item, okay? So, you're gonna put some uh, force into the bench or the step, okay? And drive those hips through quickly. Now, moving on to level three. Okay, you're going to do a step up into an A-frame, similar to what we did on complex three in session one. Okay, so really put some force into the ground, like you're banging a nail into the bench or the step, and drive through. Okay, once again, notice Jake's foot position on that foot that's coming through. It's stiff, it's ready to make contact with the ground again on, on his next stride. Okay, so that's eight each leg with that one, guys. Really work on good, stable pelvis, okay, and good trunk control there. They're, they're the key sort of cues, okay? Put force into the ground, drive through, okay? Now, moving on to uh, movement or exercise B, okay? This is gonna be a push-up. So, I know that with running, okay, it's predominantly a lower body movement or exercise, okay, but having a good, strong, Torso in particular, but a, you know, decent upper body strength is also very important, particularly for our sprinters, okay? So, the key cue here, and with any core exercise, sucking your belly button into your spine, squeezing your bum cheeks together, we wanna to focus on going slow on the way down and powering on the way up. So for our level one guys, okay, we'll just be doing a basic push up. You might be aiming for something around eight to 12 reps. Okay, to advance it, okay, you might be able to externally load it by putting something on your back, for example, a plate, okay, or you can do hand release push ups on level three as Jake's going to demonstrate here. Okay, so he goes slow on the way down and then powers up, getting his hands off the ground. Okay, slow on the way down and up. Good, okay. And he'll rep that out for roughly eight to 12 reps, depending on what your upper body strength is like at this current point in time, okay? Once again, the focus with our push-up in this program is to keep a really strong midsection, sucking our belly button into our spine and squeezing our bum cheeks together. Okay, good luck with complex number one, guys. Complete four sets of that, and we'll see you on the other side. Okay, welcome to complex number two. Hope you went well with the step-ups and also the push-ups, okay. Now, the first, or the A exercise, or the A movement in this complex is what's known as a supine hamstring march, okay. So, judging by the name, it's focused on our hamstrings and, and our strength and stability in that area of the body, okay. So watching Jake, you're in a hip extension position to start off with, this is level one, okay. You'll gradually walk your heels out all the way to the point in which your legs are straight and your bum is just off the ground, like so. Then you'll allow your body to relax, you'll bring your heels back in towards your body, you'll get set and recommence. Now notice once again his toes were off the ground there all the way through his heels and he's just walking his heels out all the way. Very small steps, okay? And then come back in. So we'll do a total of five of those walkouts. So Jake's going for his third rep. Noticing the small steps once again. Okay, well done Jake. So he would do obviously two more reps to make up the five. Okay, now moving on to level two of this movement. Okay, if, if that wasn't difficult enough for you. Okay, you come up to the top. Once again, you take small steps out. Feeling that hamstring eccentrically loading, 
and then also the sort of isometric contraction there at the end of each step, okay? And then you're bringing it back in this time, and that's the advancement. Okay, once you're back in, you bring it back out. So it goes out and back in for five reps. Looks easy, but believe me, guys, it really fires up the hamstrings. Okay, you can have a rest there, Jake, thank you. All right, now level three. You're all wondering what it is. Okay, now you extend your hips and you also extend your fingertips to the ceiling. Okay, this creates a bit of instability. Now, you walk your heels out as you did with level one and two, all the way to the legs straight. Now, when the legs are straight like where Jake is, you lift up the left leg first, hold, down, then the right leg, hold, roughly three to five seconds, down, and then you walk them back in. Complete that movement out and back for five times. Okay, well done Jake. How's the hamstrings there? Yeah, good tight. All right, good stuff. All right, now moving on. Once again, we focus on one part of the lower body. Now we're going to the, the other part or, or another part. Okay, now we're gonna be doing our eccentric calf raises here. So find a step find a bench, find some sort of box, okay? You're gonna start at the bottom, okay? Drive up, hold, three, two, one, down, three, two, one, up. Holding at the top, three, two, one, down, three, two, one, and up. Now, if you wanna advance this, guys, okay, with one arm, one hand supporting, obviously, on, on something around you like a wall or a bench or something similar you can hold some weight or you can put a backpack on with a heap of textbooks and other things in there okay just anything that's going to just going to load that movement okay so four sets of, of that particular complex good luck with it to really get those hamstrings fired up okay and also you'll, you'll do some excellent work on your lower leg in the calf raises okay Good luck, we'll see you in complex number three. Yeah. Athletes, complex number three. Okay, we've, we've got in our um, A exercise or movement, a split squat. Okay, level one is just body weight. So notice Jake keeping an excellent body position here. All his weight is through his front heel, slow on the way down, three count, and powering up. Up, three, two, one, up. Okay, eight reps each leg, well done, okay. Level two, guys, we are now, as we have been with the other movements, externally loading it, okay? Whether that's gym equipment that you have at home or you have access to, or if it's just household items, okay? Get creative, okay? Once again, forms the same, guys, all the way through the heel, dropping your hips straight down and straight back up again, really working on snappy on the way up. Okay, well done. Okay, level three, guys, for our more advanced athletes, Okay, is known as a Bulgarian split squat. Now, to set this one up, okay, you're gonna find a, a step, a couch, a bench, something, okay, where you can put your back foot up at, and use it as a platform, okay? All right, so you're gonna walk in, you're gonna have your calves touching that particular platform that you've selected, okay, step out with one leg, okay, and then that back leg comes up to rest on that uh, piece of equipment Selected. Now with this guys, three seconds on the way down, really working on that powerful drive of the hips as you come up. Notice front heel doesn't come off the ground as with the other split squats. Okay, and he's really working on that good body position. Now when you swap over after eight reps, match your toes up and then step back. Jacob showing excellent body position there and great form, great tempo. Okay, well done, okay? That is complex with movement B, okay? And this is a slow mountain climber, okay? So you can do mountain climbers in a fast manner, but as I said, we are doing it in a nice, slow and controlled manner, okay? So level one here, guys, you'll be trying to do this for about 30 seconds. Level two, 45, and our more advanced guys, greater training age, you'll be doing this for a minute. Now, 
We're really focusing on just keeping our body strong and in a good solid position. Nothing's moving apart from our knees to our elbows. The purpose of this exercise for our runners is to work on that really strong trunk position, keeping everything still, firm and stable so there's no um, energy or force loss by lateral movements, anterior, posterior movements and so on, okay? All the force is just going into the ground to propel you forward, okay? So four sets of those two particular movements, once they're completed, you'll go on to your plyometrics, which we're going to um, show you how to do in just one minute, okay? So first plyometric is a box jump, okay? So you just got to be creative, okay? You might be doing this session down at the local park. You might be doing it at home. Basically, you have to find something that's, you know, roughly from knee to waist height to do your box jump onto, okay? Now, I've got a park bench here, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do it. So, guys, you come up to the bench here, okay? You, you, you get in a good solid squat type position, okay, you're going to go back with your arms and your hips, okay, and when you activate and drive up onto the box, okay, you're going to do it in a really powerful and snappy manner, so it'll be just up and stick it there, okay, so you're down there, hips through, and stick it there, okay, so when you're landing, you're really trying to pull the chute, have your hands down there by your pockets. Okay, really working on powerfully extending from your ankles, knees and hips. So you start in that triple flexion position. Okay, when you jump, you're coming into triple extension, ankles, knees and hips. Okay, so just doing it a bit side on. So you're back like that. One, two, three is flex. When you're ready to go, you just drive through and extend. Okay, so back. Okay, so really work on that powerful hip drive, be really snappy in that movement, okay? You do five jumps and then you'll have a nice long rest, roughly two minutes. In that time you might do some stretching, some rolling, or just chill out, okay? And then you'll perform your next set of five. The rest is really important, don't rush through it, you need to allow your body to recover. Good luck. The second plyometric exercise that you'll do is known as a pogo jump. So some of you might have played with pogo sticks over the years, they're basically like a spring loaded thing that you jump on and they just pop up and down off the ground, okay? And very similar to this, we want our ankle, foot and our calf complex to be doing a very similar thing. So just really popping off the ground, being really elastic and powerful, okay? So, you might have access to some mini hurdles like I do here, or you might just have to do these off the ground, okay? If you're doing five jumps, you'll have a good sort of solid rest, maybe 20 seconds, and then you'll do another five, 20 second rest, another five, okay? And you'll follow that by a really good long rest of two minutes as we did with our box jumps. Okay, so if you've got no equipment, you're just gonna do it like this, okay? Really work on being stiff through the ankles and the feet as I described earlier. Imagine your, your foot and ankle is a hammer and you're basically banging a nail into the surface in which you're jumping on, okay? So like so. Okay, that's how you do that if you have no equipment. So five jumps and you'd have a good long rest and then you move on. Now if you do have some equipment like this, you might set up five hurdles. You're just gonna jump through these. Okay, so five jumps, you walk back, you'll complete that another two times and you'll have two minutes rest. Okay, good luck guys, that'll complete your session.